This is a Tip TV special on Brexit Wednesday and what better man to join me than of course Lawson Muncaster who is of course the MD and also co-founder of City AM. So Lawson, uh, how are you feeling on this historic day? You're not feeling it's that historic as everyone's making out I hear? Uh, good afternoon. Um, it's, it's a day that will go into the history books. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure it's the significant day of, of, of Brexit. I'm certainly very impressed with uh, your front cover today, showing all the different papers and how we led up to uh, Brexit yeah. Wednesday. So, um... yeah, no, I saw that. I saw that last night when uh, Christian sent it across quite late on, and I thought it was quite good. It encapsulates sort of the whole story from from mm -hmm. way back in September last year. I also think it's quite appropriate that there's, I think, there's a, yeah, there's 12 headlines there. And uh, Nicola Sturgeon, I see, is in one part of the 12. And I think that's probably quite proportional to what she should be involved in, not where she's well, trying to take her stance of, at the vote. Um, the vote last night, of course, where Scotland will get a second referendum. I mean, how do you feel about that? Um, I think history will be a lot more cruel to Nicola than to Alex Salmon. I think um, she's a very clever woman. I think she's just a little bit young. And she's, the way she's actually negotiated from the point of wanting one, mm. um, I think it's been rather naive, very politically astute, but pretty young and pretty naive. I think Alex Salmon would have been a better choice, he's a little bit older, a bit wiser. Um, I heard some good reports about him on, on uh, Newsnight, I think, on Monday from Birmingham or whatever it was. But I think a lot of people in Scotland are more concerned at the fact that she seems to be concentrating on this referendum rather than some of the really poignant issues in uh, the country such as you know education's going down once it was considered as a worldwide center exactly. for yeah. education yeah. and other things so you know what do you make of this um i i think again uh, it's naivety i mean she's very much wanted i mean the smp want the independent scotland that is their, yeah. their, their that's their mantra so i don't i wouldn't attempt to say she's doing the wrong thing in that respect um she's certainly taken uh, her eye off those particular points. And I think Theresa May had a popular about education and NHS and stuff like that. And I think the retort was, we're still doing better than New England. I think was her sort of attitude. But again, there's that sort of politically naive, myopic world. That's not what it's about. It's about the people of Scotland. And I think she's, um, this, this, this SNP mantra is taking the political process away from the people mm. and just concentrating specifically on that. And I think <clears throat> the history books will look back and say, you failed the people of Scotland yeah. for your own political ambition. And I actually think the SNP now under her is basically a busted flush. Yeah. I don't. I think give her, a, give her a referendum, give her a... I think what we should say, though, and it could be a much better argument with Theresa and her, is say, we'll give you in the, this referendum as soon as you want, mm. provided that you get acceptance from Europe beforehand, that you can be accepted in Europe. But it's really frustrating. I mean, you've had your referendum, you know, and, and you wanted to be a part of the UK, and now suddenly, because we're out of Euro, and, you know, they had the chance to vote for it. I know most of Scotland wanted to remain. Hey, I wanted to remain. But um, it, just, it's, it just feels like, uh, you know, I look on it badly. Yeah, I mean, I, well, no, I'm, like, I'm a Scot. I'm probably, I actually think I'm probably more Scottish than, than Nicola is. I love my country and I love Britain. I love Europe and I love the world. You know, I'm a part of that process. Yeah. And, you know, Scotland's in my heart. I'm a bit odd in the respect that I will actually support England, apart from obviously against Scotland, you know. Yeah. I'm, but, I, but I'm married to an English lass. You know, my kids are having, you know, what are we doing? Yeah. You know, it's not a question of this sort of romantic notion back in, you know, the days if you go back in history when Scotland tried to do it and went to Panama and then died and lost all our money and we had to come back to England, begging bowls and all that kind of nonsense. That's not going to happen yeah. regardless if referendum says yes or no. I think we need to um, buckle down. I think the referendum by law has been passed, I believe. Um, so we'll have one. Um, but I, I genuinely think that... Um, It'll go backwards, not forwards. Well, yeah, this is my last question on Scotland because we've got a lot to cover. Yeah. But realistically, could, could Scotland cope without the UK? Because, I mean, come on, you know, North Sea Oil and all that sort of thing, it's not as valuable as it once was. And that was the main driver behind the initial referendum. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think there is an argument to say Scotland could do well on its own, OK? But part of something, Yeah. OK? And I don't think Europe wants Scotland at the moment. Um, I think England does, and, yeah. and I believe that the majority of people in Scotland want to belong to the Union. Yeah. Um, I don't think it would be a divorce. I think Alex Salmon is much more softer in this report, that 
you know, we are cousins, we are a big, you know, we're a family. Mm. It's a bit like Brexit as well. I don't think this is a massive divorce. I mean, so far we've seen what the legal proposition is we're going to convert European law to British law. Yeah. I mean, that's hardly a divorce. We're just changing a name, mm. you know. So I think there's a lot of hype. I think there's a significance of the divorce um, in terms of the separation. Um, but I think we need each other so much, yeah. you know. And I think we're in sen we as British people are uh, probably... Uh, epidemically centre, mm. right? In and out of Europe, it doesn't matter. I promise you, if there's any problem in Europe, we'll be helping. Yeah. In or out, you know? Bear in mind, we just, I think we just finished paying the, the Marshall Plan of $120 billion or equivalent today, a year ago, mm. right? From 1948. We are absolutely part of the European world. Mm. Whether that's inside a European monetary system or a, you know, a, a map or a, you know, a federal state, if you like, of, of yeah. Europe, um, that we are, we're close. I mean, and half our country said we don't want to be part of the process because economically we've seen nothing, mm. and they're allowed to say that. And I think that us Remainers, and yeah. I was definitely a staunch Remainer, um, got a real shock. And uh, it sh I actually looked at myself in the mirror and thought, crikey, you're so naive. You know, mm -hmm. living in Scotland, where I do, which is a massive Remain place, yeah. you know, living in London, which was massive Remain, you know, and, and commuting between the two, I thought there was no way we were going to leave Europe. Yeah, yeah. well, everyone so, was shocked. And I, think, and I think the media circus in London, yeah. you know, and I don't mean that in a, de you know, a detrimental way, but it's... Hey, you're the one who's MD, yeah. but... Yeah, but, <laughs> but at least we put the balance <laughs> arguments yeah. together. You know, we, didn't, we did not put out mm. Brexit, Yes or no. We, we, we basically said we believed, I think Christian rightly, our editor, articulated the comment on both sides. Mm. But I think there was definitely a tendency towards Brexit, the economic argument. Yeah. And me and him will always differ on this one. But that's why he's the editor and I'm the managing director. Okay. And we could have a good old debate. Yeah. Um, but that shouldn't, it shouldn't be an either or in, in terms of what you're saying to your reader. You yeah. should, in the business newspapers, for example, it's got to have a balanced view. Absolutely. But we were talking earlier about, you know, Brexit Wednesday, and you thought it was almost like a storm and a teacup, and it's not that sort of massive historical day that will go down in the history books as perhaps people are making out. So when it comes to sort of articles in your newspaper about that, how are you finding readership? Are you finding people after nine months are just getting a little bit sick about hearing all about Brexit? Or, you know, is it selling newspapers? I know yours is free, but, you know, how many uh, but, no, I, mean, I, I think I think business and content at the moment is, is, is never been, you know, consumed more, both that offline, online. Mm. I mean, I think it's important that the country understands what we're getting ourselves into. And actually, I think, um, even back to the Scottish referendum a few years ago, I think it's a really healthy thing to get people to debate and discuss, mm. you know, a collective of, of what democracy is and how the responsibility of what a vote is as well. So I, I've got no problem writing a lot about it. Um, yeah. I think that we are getting a bit carried away and I think it's something like, as of today, is it two years before we actually leave Europe? Yeah, they've you know? got two years to negotiate, <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it will take that time. I mean, I had an interesting fact the other day. I think Iceland, they, when they had, a, uh, had to come out of the European Union, now, bear in mind, they only actually fish, I think, okay? Right? And I think that's kind of what they do. Well, they have hot, uh, you know, water things as well. But, but in, in essence, <laughs> it's not as complicated. Yeah. Uh, and I think it took them something like 18 months. Yeah. You know, and, and th that's very simplistic in, in, in what had mm. to happen there. We've got a far more complicated thing. And I, re I don't think the, the, the issue will be about the, the big selling topics of, 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 you know, the broadsheets or, or people like the mail of, you know, uh, immigration. I think immigration is a certainty to accept it. It's so important for everybody. I'm a pro immigration. But I mean, look at London. Yeah. We need. I mean, it just it, that, that just won't happen. I think the real sensitivity will be what is the liability that we leave behind leaving Europe. Mm. What is that price? You know. And I think Europeans have a right to, to stand up and, and argue that point. And that's where they'll come from. And um, we still want Europe to be our friends. Yeah. You know. So, I, th th there's enough arguments on both sides. I mean, I think economically some political editors um, are a bit naive saying, no, Europe is dead and we're, the, we're going to be the strongest person, we should go in like this, this and this. Mm. Um, that won't happen, yeah. number one. And number two, it's not necessary. Yeah. You know, it's, this is not about a, a divorce where we hate each other. This is a separation because we've broken down. And actually, probably through this process, Europe and Britain will be better friends.
Yeah. You know, sometimes you, you have friends that get divorced and actually become better friends after they got divorced. You know, that does happen. Does it? I, 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 do, know, I do know of one, okay? Yeah. okay. But, but my, point, my point is, economic, if you take the, mm. the, the real reason why we, we, we've fallen out, is I think, well, not fallen out, the reason why we're leaving is, I think we don't want to be subsidising continuously yeah. when people are not making the effort. Mm. I think we've got to do it ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I think that I respect that. Absolutely. I don't want to be doing it, unfortunately. But, um, there you go. I think it was, was it the 23rd of June when it, the, um, the referendum, referendum was, happened yes. there was. And that was a shocking day for me. I was, I was, really, I was quite shell-shocked. That was probably everybody the Everybody was shell-shocked. Yeah. I think everybody just sort of had an hour's silence thinking, wow, what have we done? All those protest votes, they actually were counted. But uh, I thought we up my mother-in-law. I said, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> but, uh, um, but at the same token, uh, it's a jolt. Um, there's certain, you know, Europe is failing mm. monetary-wise. Yeah. And so something has to happen. And um, everyone has to have a really strong look at themselves. And I suppose this process, regardless of it, you know, it, let's not just look at Europe as a whole, but mm. I'm sure France and Spain, Italy, Portugal, yeah. these, these countries will have a really good look at themselves to find out what they need to do. So this, it's almost like we've been doing our dirty washing in public. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I don't know if that's politically astute of the politicians, yes. or maybe it just happened that way because there was a distance between politicians and, and the electorate. Well, it will certainly be an interesting one to watch. Now, we are out of time, but I just have one quick more question off yeah. topic for you. So now we've seen Osborne, who's going to become the new editor of the Evening Standard. So a, a Christian May's Day's numbered as soon as um, Uncle Phil steps down, Philip Hammond. Oh, Jesus, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, that was quite interesting. Um, I, I think it's great for newspapers. I, I, my only... Con and, I, and, and I have a respect for George Osborne. I actually think he... You won't believe this, but I actually think Gordon Brown's also a very good um, financial person. He kept. He was very good during the uh, referendum in Scotland. Yeah, I had respect for him then, but that's pretty much where it began and ended. Well, look, well, no, he didn't take us into the euro, by the way, from Mr. Blair. So you have to remember these things go by, okay? Well, anyway. I'm still upset about the goal, but never mind. That's right, exactly. <laughs> um, to answer your question, I think George Osborne will do a good job. I think he can do that. I don't know how he can do BlackRock, MP, yeah. and Standard. I think, from a business perspective, a newspaper perspective when a celebrity um, person comes in to take the helm of any editorial product, it has to be done very, very carefully mm. because you'll have a huge team of journalists down there that were bloody hard, right, who will not, will not be open-armed for this guy just to walk in and have total autonomy, okay? So that will have to be very, very, very carefully done. Mm. And that's not, it's, 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 it's more He's just a figurehead at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, but it's a friendly bit of advice because there could yeah. be a revolt. In terms of how a um, Tory MP manages a newspaper that is for the Londoner, yeah, across all, uh, the whole of London, in that sort of lifestyle way, which is inherently left, that's an interesting conversation that will happen. Yeah. Dealing with Sadiq Khan and TfL mm. and all the distribution issues. Again, I'm not sure that Sadiq and George are the, the greatest of fans. So yeah. he'll have to tread carefully in these different places. But good luck to him. And, and I hope the standard, you know, like any newspaper, man, yeah. I, I like newspapers. So I, I hope it, it succeeds. Yeah. Good. Well, on that note, we'll leave it there, Lawson. Thank and you Chris, so much. Yeah, and Christian will still have his job. Philip will never get it. <laughs> good. All right, Lawson, thank, thank you. you so much. Okay, that was Lawson Muncaster who there. <laughs> I'll say that again. Okay, that was Lawson Muncaster there, who is the MD and also co-founder of City AM.